Ty's a brace away from thirstgym.com. Today we're talking about exercises called the Cicinelli Turtle Roll. This is a great abdominal exercise. It can also help improve your hip mobility and overall just your movement quality as well. Now, this exercise I got from a guy, Zach Couples. Um, he's great when it comes to all things movement related. He also thinks outside the box really well. Um, this is actually a pretty challenging exercise uh, for some particular individuals. So if you've got really big, bulky power lifters, linemen, or people that are really cranked through extension, so they're kind of like this, we want to try to improve their movement quality by shifting all their center of mass back so that they can find their heels, get their pelvis underneath them a little bit better, and they're not cranking through extension through their low back. What this exercise is going to do is going to help reinforce that, but it's also going to light the abs up um, and give you a good quality training effect as well. So. What you need is like a yoga block or something you can put in between your knees and your elbows. With some of our bigger athletes that we have that really struggle with this quality, we even use a really light med ball, like a four pound med ball for them to hold uh, to be able to perform this exercise. I think you just need some space. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna get on the ground and you're basically gonna get in like a sit up slash crunch position here. And then you're gonna take the yoga block and you're gonna place it between both of your knees. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna crunch that yoga block with our elbows and our knees. We wanna create tension so that we don't lose the yoga block, okay? So what this is gonna do, having my palms for me, my knees together, that's gonna really open up the back side of the upper back. So obviously the scapulas have to come around the rib cage um, and we're having to create that pressure. So we're gonna get that serratus involved as well which if you know through PRI stuff is gonna get your obliques involved, which is all good for what we're trying to accomplish here. Then what we're gonna do is just basically roll back and forth um, until we get the desired reps that we want. So when you get here, it's very challenging, so I hope I'm able to talk while I do it. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna roll backwards on my upper back, roll back to my feet. Every time my heels touch the ground, that's considered one rep. So I wanna make sure I keep my thumbs pushed out bringing them together makes the exercise easier. Again, we want to force that external, externally rotated position here to be able to open things up. And then what we're gonna do is roll back. And up, see, I didn't get up there. There's my first rep. Really keep pressure between my knees and my elbows. And you're gonna be feeling your abs a lot. Just like that. So. Very challenging exercise. That was just three, four reps. I can already tell my abdominals are doing some work. My low back already feels more relaxed um, because again, I'm getting that posterior tilt, creating some flexion, which can be good if you're cranked through that extension uh, based movement pattern. So when it comes to your programming, Generally, you got two options. You can do this for time or for reps. With beginners, I really like reps. I want them to focus on being able to get all the way back up and all the way back. Where if you got somebody that just for whatever reason, their movement quality is really struggling, they're having a hard time getting their feet, just get them rolling back and forth and then program that for time. Um, and then for your more advanced athletes, then certainly you can do it for time and see how many reps they can get within a particular time range. So you got some different options there, but generally I like anywhere from two to four sets, about 10 to 15 reps. If I'm gonna do reps, if I'm gonna do time, I like to start usually around 15 seconds and then build up progressively to 30 seconds, which is very hard. That'd be more for your advanced athletes, but people that generally need that. The other nice thing about this exercise is it's great for a warm up. So if you're trying to figure out a way to get moving relatively quickly before your workout session, or you're like, man, my hips are killing me because you're in that anterior pelvic tilt or anterior position all the time. Nothing wrong with doing some hip flexor mobility stuff, but I think you'll find as soon as you do this and then you go try to squat or deadlift, your, your hips are immediately going to feel better. Your low back's not going to feel all cranked and through extension. Um, and even doing it between squats and deadlifts lifts. Um, if you happen to be doing those same lifts on the same day, even better doing it between those lifts um, as kind of a filler based exercise. So if you got any questions, leave them in the comment section. Thanks. Have a great day.